Good morning and welcome to today's family service in the depths of the winter. I hope you're all well and staying safe at home. We're going to use our opening prayer and Christians have used this way of greeting each other from the early times of the church almost 2000 years ago. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. And now we come to our opening prayer. Loving God, we have come to worship you. Help us to pray to you in faith, to sing your praise with gratitude, and to listen to your word with eagerness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we've come to our time in the service where we quieten down, uh, we think about the things that perhaps we've done this week that we wish we hadn't done, or perhaps think about the things and say sorry for the things we've neglected to do that perhaps we could have done. Our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us, save us and help us for behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say, Father, forgive us, save us and help us. And for letting ourselves be drawn away from you 
by temptations in the world around us. Father, forgive us, save us and help us for living as if we were ashamed to belong to your son. Father, forgive us, save us and help us. So the absolution is where we understand that we are forgiven by God. And these are the words that God uses to forgive us. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now today's story is all about Jesus calling his followers and his followers recognising a little bit about who he is. So I'm just going to introduce you to some of our characters before we do the reading. This is Jesus and here is Philip and sitting underneath a fig tree and I think he's praying or meditating. This is Nathaniel and over on the sea this is on the ocean doing some fishing are Jesus's friends and they are Peter and Andrew. They're very busy today. So today's story is all about Jesus calling his followers and then beginning to learn a little bit more about who he is. This is a reading from John's Gospel chapter 1 verses 43 to 51. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. When he got there, he ran across to Philip and said, Come, follow me. Philip's hometown was Bethsaida, the same as Andrew and Peter. Philip went and found Nathanael and told him, We found the one Moses wrote of in the law, the one preached by the prophets. It's Jesus, Joseph's son, the one from Nazareth, Nathanael said. Nazareth, you've got to be kidding. But Philip said, come and see for yourself. When Jesus saw him coming, he said, there's a real Israelite, not a false bone in his body. Nathanael said, where did you get that idea? You don't know me. Jesus answered, one day, long before Philip called you here, I saw you sitting under a fig tree. Nathanael exclaimed, Rabbi, you are the son of God, the king of Israel. Jesus said, you've become a believer simply because I say I saw you one day sitting under a fig tree. Well, you haven't seen anything yet. Before this is over, you're going to see heaven open and God's angels descending to the son of man and ascending again. So, Jesus came along and began to gather followers. It may look as though he chose a random assortment of people to follow him, a group of uneducated fishermen, but there is a line here that shows he knew what he was looking for. With Nathaniel, he recognised him as a man without deceit, i.e. having a true and honest heart. Who knows what he saw in Andrew and Peter and Philip and all the others, but he didn't go looking for people of great learning or wealth or status or power or any of the other qualities which we often hold in awe and respect in our societies. And those people who earned their living simply and led very normal lives abandoned all they knew and were comfortable with because they recognised in Jesus something special. Unquestioning, they left all their worldly security and comforts of home and they followed him. I wonder who knows what a mentor is. It's someone who advises another person, giving them the benefit of their wisdom. Often they're a bit older and their extra years give them more experience and knowledge and more wisdom perhaps. Anyone can be a mentor, an older sibling, your parents, grandparents, the vicar, teachers, coaches, etc. In a world where influencers are rife on social media, well, that, what's actually important is to find someone to follow who is wise and makes good decisions and thinks carefully about the impact of their actions on others and on our planet. And if you find yourself 
in that position of being a mentor or able to guide someone, then you should be valuing that privilege and being the best version of yourself that you can. What I take from this passage is how the things often portrayed as important in our world, on social media, on TV and the internet, and in newspapers, etc., were irrelevant to Jesus and his values. What was important to Jesus was what he saw on the inside. And the same with his followers. They didn't choose to follow a person of wealth and political or court status. They chose to follow someone who was extraordinary in his vision and teachings for how to live lives that please God and made the world a better place. Because I don't think anyone can argue that if we all choose to follow Jesus and live by his teachings, to love God above all else and to love and care for everyone around us as we would wish to be loved and cared for, then his, this whole world will be a better, happier and healthier place. Amen. The Affirmation of Faith. Here we say out loud what we believe about God. These words are taken from the baptism service. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world. We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And you might like to find the 12 disciples and getting an old egg box for a dozen eggs. You could create them like I've done. You could go and research all their names and do little drawings of each of them and then put them in your egg box. And then on the back, I've written all the names and maybe you could learn them all and test yourself on them. I wonder if you can guess which one is Judas.
This is the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. This is a poem by a young girl called Mary Stevenson, uh, just 14 years old when she wrote this in 1936. The poem speaks to us today and we can use it as a prayer. And it's really about someone's journey with God. The poem is called Footprints in the Sand. One night I dreamed I was walking along the beach with the Lord. Many scenes from my life flashed across the sky. In each scene I noticed footprints in the sand. Sometimes there were two sets of footprints, other times there were one set of footprints. This bothered me because I noticed that during the low times in my life, when I was suffering from anger, anguish, sorrow, defeat, I could see only one set of footprints. So I said to the Lord, you promised me, Lord, that if I followed you, you would walk with me always. But I've noticed that during the trying periods of my life, there have only been one set of footprints in the sand. Why, when I needed you most, have you not been there for me? The Lord replied, the times when you have seen only one set of footprints were the times when I carried you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus and for Jesus's wisdom. We thank you that he doesn't need us to be special or particularly amazing, um, but that he still knows we have something to offer the world when we follow him. Heavenly Father, at this time in the pandemic, we pray for those who are affected by any illnesses, by loneliness and by isolation. And we pray for those who are poorly and unwell. We give thanks for the NHS doctors, the nurses, the porters, um, and anybody helping support those who are really ill with coronavirus at this time. But we also give thanks for other people, so people working in shops, pharmacies, um, also for key workers, those working in school where they're balancing, uh, looking after their families and also looking after children and all those around us that need their support. We pray, especially at the moment, for patience and for empathy. Patience to know that we need to just hang on a bit longer and follow the guidelines and, and do what we need to do. But also empathy for each other and understanding that we're all suffering in different ways um, and that we need to just listen and accept how one another are feeling whilst we try our very best to get through this. So Heavenly Father, we just thank you that you're with us at this time. Help us trust you um, and trust Jesus's wisdom. Amen. Sending out into God's world. The Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly upon us and give us peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon us all and remain with us always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.